The party never was nor will be for me what my people are. My loyalty to my party ends where my duty to my people begins. Ngayon, napalapit na ang ating halala. We control a huge and monumental task. Our people expect the impossible. We have come here to proclaim the determination of the Filipino people to continue the struggle against the forces of evil for this young and vigorous nation of ours, nothing is really impossible. Dito sa atin, Bayang Pilipinas. Mayat maya ay meron tayong palabas na kung tawagin natin ay <laughs> halalan, eleksyon. At ito ang karnabal na napapanood natin ngayon. Hindi ito kurido o kwento ni Lula Basyang. Pero ito'y puno ng kababalaghan. Nagbabakbakan at naglalabo-labo ang mga pinunong totoo at parsipikado. Mga bida at butangero. Mga bayani at balasubas. Kung minsan, eh, eri pang masaklap. Siguro kung sumali si Kristo dito, ang nanalo pa alay, si Judas. Pero dito sa atin, bayang Pilipinas, kahit ano pa ang batikos o pintas, ay meron tayong eleksyon. Meron tayong halalan. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong sariling desisyon. At meron tayong mga pinunong pinagpipilian. Useless din eh, kasi madami nang dadaya ngayon sa election. So parang, what for? Parang if ever may pipiliin ka, pipiliin mo kasi siya yung least of the many evils. Uh, parang uh, laruan ng uh, ginagawang ako uh, sa politika eh. Puro na lang din sa gobyerno eh. Kailan ba nagkaroon tayo ng eleksyon na pabor sa ating mga mamayan? Bakit ganun? Bakit ang baba ng tingin natin sa eleksyon? Bakit ang baba ng tingin natin sa politiko? At bakit ang baba ng tingin natin sa sarili bilang butante? Balikan natin ang kasaysayan para malaman ang kasagutan. Panahon ng Kastila. If we were to speak of uh, national elections, the first one was really held in 1935. Yeah? The first election for a president and a vice president of the Philippine Commonwealth. But if we were to speak of uh, local elections, this has been a process that has been going on since the Spanish colonial period. The Spanish government instituted some reforms and allowed what they call the uh, principalia of each town to elect among themselves okay, the person who would become the gobernadorcillo or the equivalent of today's town mayor. Okay, but elections during the Spanish period were very limited no, to at most 12, 13 people. They were mostly cabezas, the barangay, no, or heads of the various barangays. Panahon na ng dala ng hamburger. Panahon ng Amerika. Elections in the American period was a very limited exercise among a very select group 
of people because the requirements for voting were very stringent. Ganito iyon. Kung wala ka pang 23 anyos, sorry totoy, hindi ka pa pwedeng bumoto. Kung babae ka, pasensya ka mare, hindi ka rin pwedeng bumoto. Kung mahirap ka, kung wala kang mga ari-arian, kung hindi mo kaya magbayad ng buwis, pare, hindi ka rin pwedeng bumoto. At kung wala kang pinag-aralan, aray, kung hindi ka marunong mag-spoken ng English o mag-abla Espanyol, abay, wala kang karapatang bumoto amang. In the 1907 elections, no? Uh, you would have a voting population of something like only about 1-2% to 2 of the entire Philippine population. Finally, when we get to 1935, no, okay, they remove the property requirements. Okay, so they, even, even if you're poor, uh, you, you could vote for as long as you met the age and the residency requirements. No? The mga kababaihan were fighting for women's suffrage. So yung mga kababaihan natin, noong mga 1936 na pumunta sa mga lawmakers at saka sa gobyerno, gusto namin ang karapatan naming mahalal at kanilang ganun. So sabi ng gobyerno, o oh, sige, mag-tebisit kayo. Pakita nyo that you can produce 300,000 signatures. And if you can produce 300,000 signatures from the women, then we will allow you to vote. Ginawa ng kababaihan yun. And they not only produced 300,000, they produced much more. They exceeded the number of you know, signatories, so that in 1937, in November, for the first local elections, the women were able to vote. I think it was only in after the war when they removed completely the, even the literacy requirements. You could be a no-read, uh, no-write person, but you are still allowed to vote. No? The Philippine electoral process has basically grown from a very small um, uh, exercise by a very select few okay, to what it is today, in, in the present, as a more democratic, more uh, popular endeavor. Sa ganitong pagbabago, may di inaasahang epekto. Sa pagpili ng butante ng kandidato, abay natabunan ng isyo. Ang nangibabaw ay popularidad. Uy, bold. The moment we popularize the electoral process, we lose certain elements of the campaign. You will get uh, a large number of people okay, who have a vote, okay, but don't have sufficient education, experience to understand the issues okay, behind the elections. So what have elections become in the modern day uh, period are basically a name recall contest. We're talking here about 35 million voters. Many of the members of this population are really poor and uh, they drop out of school after a certain period. I think this basically explains the shift from, uh, in the very least, you know, intelligent selection when it comes to national offices to, to really uh, focusing on just uh, personalities. It's very easy for movie stars, basketball players, and popular figures to win in Philippine elections. Why? Because their names are easy to remember. Politica should be a dis an avenue for the discussion of substantial issues. Uh, nagiging avenue na para makinig yung uh, mga tao sa isang magandang artista na kakanta o mga kandidato na sa sayaw sa dyan sa platforma. Hindi na issue ang mahalaga. Ang mahalaga ay pangalang naaalala. Ang mahalaga ay magandang kara. Ha! Kung sinong magaling kumanta at kung sinong magaling sumayaw. Ra, ra, ra. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha. Ito ang medyo nakakalitong sitwasyon na hinaharap natin sa ngayon.
A lot of people look at our Congress and some of our elected officials as clowns. You know, I mean, they're, they're engaged in uh, PR gimmicks and, uh, you know, they double talk. Ang politiko. Wow. Basta ninyo ang politiko, ang kandidato. Tumatakbo para makuha ang ating boto. Nangangampanya para maluklok sa pwesto. Siya ang pangunahing tao sa eleksyon. Siya ba ay maglilingkod ba yan o konsumisyon? Siya ba ay marangal o hangal? At papaano ba siya nahahalal? There are still uh, politicians who proceed on the basis of old paradigms. You know, the use of money, uh, political party politics, uh, the use of government machinery and government resources for their own end. Noong anaw, noong kukunti pa lang ang may karapatang gumoto, simple lang ang pangangampanya para sa mga kandidato. You didn't have to go around all over the place, the far-flung barrios to get people to listen to you. No? You talk in the town plaza and you expect the principal citizens to be there. Today in Manila, there are many who believe that... Sa kauna-unahang eleksyong pambansa, Noong uh, 1935, ang nanalong kandidato sa pagka-presidente ay si Charachara-chara, si Manuel Quezon. Quezon campaigned through the ward leaders. I mean, they didn't do the kind of, of uh, barnstorming all over the country that, that uh, politicians these days have to do. Okay, all you have to do is to let the people in the provinces, your, your ward leaders, campaign for you. Nagbago lang ang estilo ng pangangampanya noong kumandidato sa pagka-presidente si Ramon Magsaysay. Magsaysay, in 1953, conducted what he called a barrio-to-barrio -barrio campaign. And he was the one who popularized all of this, you know. Uh, visiting the houses of the poor, shaking hands with uh, people from the barrios. Bukod sa pakikipagkamay sa mga butante at pahalik-halik sa mga baby, maraming ginagawa ang mga kandidato para manalo. Karaniwan ay nagmimembro sila sa isang partido politikal o kaya nagbubuo ng sariling partido. There's a joke that Louis Beltran used to say and I want to share it. No? Okay. You put four Filipino politicians in a room when they come out, they would have formed five parties. Each one has his own, and they will form an alliance. May panahong malinaw ang programa ng bawat partido. Noong ang Pilipinas ay kolonya pa ng Amerika, gusto ng mga federalista na maging parte tayo ng Estados Unidos. Gusto naman ng nasyonalista na magkaroon tayo ng kasarinlan o independensya. Pero mas madalas kaysa hindi, Walang masyadong pagkakaiba ang naglalaban-labang mga partido. There is really no clear ideological differences among Philippine parties. Okay? Philippine parties are basically factional alliances which recognize the leadership of a titular head. The party system in the Philippines is very weak. I don't think that even the biggest established parties at this point uh, are bound together by love or principle. Ang mga partido dito sa bansa natin parang ginagawa overnight just to accommodate yung political ambition ng mga gusto magkandidato. Parang yung mga ambisyoso nagmimiting, oh gusto magkandidato, oh sama-sama tayo. Ito, itong ating platform, ayos na. You cannot expect loyalty uh, to the party under those circumstances. Ang uso kasi sa atin dito ay palimbing at political butterfly. Palipat-lipat, papalit-palit ng partido. Ha! Eh, hindi pala ito palimbing pero kasing asim. People shift parties very easily. A guy like Magsaysay used to be a liberal. He ran for president under the Nationalist Party. A guy like Marcos was a liberal in the Senate. Then he shifted. 
he joined the Nationalist Party. Kung ang sinasakyan ng kandidato ay ang partido, ang mga sandata niya ay pandarahas at pandaraya. Yan yung magkapatid na panda. Ha! Guns, guns, gold, flying voters, dagdag bawas. Our elections have rarely been conducted in a free, honest, and orderly manner. These guns, guns, and uh, gold politics is a uh, post-war phenomenon. After the experience of World War II, you know, where there was a proliferation of, uh, of guns, you, know, you begin to experience this, this, this uh, uh, politicians you know, using armed, armed goons to be able to get the vote. No? Maraming politiko ang naging warlord o panginoong militar. Pinaliligiran nila ang sarili ng mga bodyguard. Nagbuo sila ng mga private army. Iyon namang mga nasa pudin. Pinakawala nila ang pulis at militar laban sa kanilang karibal sa politika. Laging madugo ang eleksyon. Daan-daan ang namatay. Mga kandidato mismo, mga taga-suporta ng mga politiko, mga gurong na mamahala sa butuhan, mga botanting nagbabantay sa baluta. politics has always been there. Uh, even during the Spanish period, you would have candidates you know, buying uh, voters. No? If during the time of Marcos, the prevalent instrument for pacifying the people was through guns and goons, now the prevalent instrument for pacifying the people and buying the people is through gold. Kaya money politics is what prevails now. Uh, a lot of campaign funds come from big money, dirty money, huetting, drugs, uh, crime syndicates. The day will come when our leaders will be chosen by the crime syndicates because they are the ones with the money. Sa snap election, noong 1985, bata pa ako noon. Tinatansyang sampung bilyong piso ang ginastos ni Marco sa loob ng dalawang buwang pangangampanya. Sampung bilyon! Karamihan sa pira ay bagong imprinta ng Central Bank. Ang ilan ay pare-pareho ang serial number. Ang uh, sistema ng pandaraya ay nagiging, sabihin na lang natin, more sophisticated. Hindi kontento ang mga politiko sa paghahasik ng lagim at pamimili ng buto. Katakot-takot na pandaraya ang ginagawa nila. May mga butanting paulit-ulit na bumuboto sa iba't ibang presinto. May mga flying voters na kung saan-saan nagka-crashland. Sa ibang lugar, ang mga patay ay lumilitaw na nagpaparehistro at bumuboto. Let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. Pati nga mga ibon at saka mga bubuyog bumuboto. At meron pa yung ballot box switching. Oops! It is there! Oops! It is gone! Huwag sabi noon puno na yung ballot, ballot boxes ng mga tamang boto. At kung ang kanilang suspecha ay talo sila, eh, patayin nilang ilaw. Pagkatapos nawala na yung ballot boxes, iba ng ballot box ang ang hahalili doon sa tunay na ballot box. At siyempre, nariyan din ang pinakasikat na paraan ng pandaraya ganyan. Para sa mga matimatimakal genius, dagdag bawas. Before dagdag bawas, cheating was done at the retail level, at the precinct. But with the advent of dagdag bawas, cheating was wholesale. Alay, ganito iyan, kaibigan. Kapag ikaw ay nanalo ng dalawampung boto sa precinct level, 20 votes iyan. At iyan ay nakarecord sa tally sheet. Pagdating sa munisipyo, yan ay ililipat sa canvas board. May kasabuat ka dyan. Eh yung boto mong 20 ay dadagdagan iyan ng 
Ala, naging 120 ay jackpot para kang nanalo sa luto. Eh, toto nga, lutong-luto ka na nga. Eh, yung kalaban mo naman ay eh, babawasan ng boto. Uy, naging 5 na lang. Walang halaga. Ang galing ano. Ang galing man loko. Hindi na ngayon natitiyak ng taong bayan yung kung yung boto niya ay talagang tama ba ang pagbilang. Yan ang masakit. Nakatotohanan. May mga politikong dumudulog sa bayan na maraming alam na kalukuhan para maluklok lamang sila sa kapangyarihan. Hindi ko naman nila lahat. Pero ito ay <gasps> hindi na nakakagulat. Maraming mga tao at mga puwersa ang nakikialam. Dito sa masalimuot o magulong prosesong kung tawagin natin ay halalan. Ang mga tao at puwersang yan ay kumukonsinti o tumutulong sa panggugulo o kaya'y kumukontra at tumututul sa panluloko. Huwag kayong aalis dyan. At ito ang inyong matutunghayan. Ito sa atin, sa panahon ng halalan, hindi lamang kandidato ang nasa larangan. Iba't ibang pwersa ang nagtutunggalian upang maimpluensyahan ang takbo ng pamahalaan. Sino-sino ba ang mga pwersang ito na kuminsan na may dalang binipisyo, kuminsan man ay nakakagulo? Upang isigaw ang unang sigaw ng Plaza Miranda upang malaya ang mga masyarakat. Walang kandidato yata ang hindi sinuporta ng Amerikano. And then, you know, no less than Diyoslado Makapagal came out with a very strong position regarding that. And sabi niya, no, you could never win the presidency if you did not have the blessings of the Americans. He has reconquered our native land. I take great pride in presenting to you, rival of the Philippines, defender and liberator of the Filipino people, General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur. After the war, uh, in the first presidential election which we had in 1946, uh, uh, the Americans who were here in the Philippines had preferred candidates. Uh, okay? MacArthur was obviously for Rojas okay, and was not, you know, very enthusiastic about getting Osmeña as a president. Mm -hmm. When a guy like Monsai Sai you know, comes around you know, in 1953, okay, were the Americans involved? Definitely. Why? Okay, at that time, remember, you know, 1949, uh, China fell to the communists. You know? Mao Zedong they came to power. 1950, Korean War, okay? North Korea invades South Korea. So in the thinking of the Americans, if we don't act soon okay, in, in, in Southeast Asia, they will have what they call the domino principle. Since the Philippines was already an independent nation at the time, the strategy was basically we want to put an Asian leader okay, who will defend democracy using an Asian tongue, an Asian way. So they will look for a man okay, who will support their, their cause of democracy, their fight against communism, okay, but he has to be someone whom the Asians themselves will vote for. Yeah. That's why they got Magsay Sai. No? They just wanted to put a guy there who was loyal to U.S. interests and could protect okay, what, they, what they wanted to protect here in the Philippines. Eh ano naman kaya ang gusto ng Estados Unidos dito sa maliit nating bansa? We are prepared to live up to all our obligations under our mutual defense treaty with the United States. U.S. military bases. No, they wanted the Philippines as the territory that would retain the Philippine military bases. That's what for 99 years nga. It was always in the advantage, in the interest of the Americans to ensure that the presidents that they would support were malleable, no? Corruptible. As of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed 
Proclamation number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. Marcos. Marcos, can you imagine Marcos for 14 years, America, the voice of democracy, and so on and so on and so forth. And yet they knew that he was massacring Filipinos right and left, no, through his minions. And yet they gave him total support and full support. Komunismo ang pangunahing kaaway ng Amerika. Dahil sa komunismo, sinuportahan nito ang isang diktador na anti-komunista. Hindi nag-aantay, kontra-komunista. Dahil sa komunismo, nanghimasok ito sa ating mga eleksyon. Halimbawa, noong 1946, A group of politicians were elected to the National Assembly in 1946. No? were unseated. And these were the members of the Democratic Alliance led by then Luis Taruk. Itong anim na congressmen, laban sila dun sa parity amendments, laban sila dun sa US military bases, etc. Dahil sa nangyari noong 1946, may mga panahong kinukontra ng dolong kaliwa ang mismong konsepto ng eleksyon. Panluloko lang daw ito sa taong bayan. The left, I think, led in the boycott movement during the period of Marcos's rule, where it's the, it, he held elections very frequently, but they were elections that made a mockery of democracy and the electoral processes. They were elections that were used to legitimize his rule. Sa isnap election noong 1986, nagboykot na naman ang dulong kaliwa, pero bispiras na ito ng idsa. Nag-iiba na ang ihip ng hangin sa larangan ng politika. Marcos was already politically discredited and isolated. And that there were already cracks within the military, cracks within the bureaucracy, and the people's anti-dictatorship struggle was very, very strong. Unfortunately, the left uh, was not able to adjust to the changing conditions. Certainly, in the 1986 election, that was very clear. Marcos was trying to steal the vote. Well, he didn't succeed. And the church has something to do with the success of that. Sa kabila ng dayan, sa kabila ng guns, goons, and gold, ang karaniwang tugo ng simbahan sa eleksyon ay hindi boykot, kundi aktibong pakikilaho. Lessening violence and cheating and all that, That's where we, our activity has been. Let us pray together. Let us not allow a drop of blood to be shed. If we can solve this problem peacefully, that would be the best. Dahil sa papel na ginagampanan ng mga taong simpahan tuwing eleksyon, madalas silang binabatikos ng mga politiko. Hindi daw sila dapat makialam sa politika. Nilalabag daw nila ang konstitusyon ang prinsipyo ng separation of church and state. It doesn't mean that the church is forbidden from speaking on public affairs. In every sphere of our government, there is what we call the sphere of morality. And when it comes to morality, it is the jurisdiction of the church. Hmm. Pero dapat bang sumuporta o maampanya ang mga taong simbahan sa partikular na kandidato? Bye. Ibang usapan na yan. Aray. Clergymen are also citizens of the Republic and they're entitled to express their opinion as private individuals. No? Uh, but not the, in this instance, in our present situation, to speak out for the whole church. But see, our problem is we occupy a certain position in the church and we should not use that position for partisan politics. Tiyaking malinis ang eleksyon. Yan ang opisyal na tungkulin ng Commission on Elections. Comelec is more powerful than the President during elections. Uh, it's, it's got vast, uh, vast uh, powers, uh, plenary powers to keep elections uh, clean and orderly and honest. There's control over the army, the police, 
the government bureaucracy, the teachers, the process, and so on. The ones who set up the Commission on Elections as a constitutional body thought that you must have a body that has full con constitutional protection uh, against partisan pressures. People in the Commonwealth, I think, must be aware of the tremendous responsibility on their shoulders and not, and not uh, consider uh, their work uh, flippantly or a big joke or, or something that they can use for their own purposes or mm -hmm. to play up to anybody. There are indications of a growing disenchantment among our people with our democratic processes. Ang kasaysayan ng Komelec ay isang kasaysayan ng pag-uurong sulong ng kredibilidad. Komelec headed by uh, then Chairman Bora uh, is looked upon even within the Komelec as a as a, a highlight of uh, Comelec history. Uh, he made Comelec nationwide. Uh, apparently, he ran well, it's honest. Our elections have raised living conduct in a free, honest, and orderly manner. This is the challenge that confronts us today. The Comelec under uh, Chairman Ferrer, I, I think, earned uh, distinction and respect of the people for really trying to keep the elections clean. Around 1986, the Comelec was definitely on the side of uh, a dictatorship then, and uh, the entire behavior of, uh, of the Comelec from rank and file up to uh, members and chairman of the Commission on Elections uh, did not even attempt to disguise their partisanship. I think generally the, the Comeric after Edson uh, uh, has done relatively well. Uy! Eleksyon na naman! Nakatoon na naman ang lahat ng pansin sa Comeric! Kagalang-galang pa kaya? Uh, of course, one has to be hopeful uh, that they will, uh, that, that they will uh, live up to the expectations and to the responsibilities. Amerika, Kaliwa, Simbahan, Komilik, iilan lang sa mga kalahok sa kasalukuyang pinapanood nating pelikulang palabas sa ating bayan na tinatawag ay halalan. Meron pa kaya akong nakalimutan? Manalamin tayo sandali. Oy, wag nating kalimutan ang ating sarili at wag nating kalimutan ang mga botante. Dito sa bayan kung sinilangan, hindi naman lahat nagtutulog-tulogan sa mga panahon na maligalig at kadiliman. Kung mayroong dagdag bawas, mayroon din namang sumasalungat. At kung mayroon silang baril, butangiro at barya, may mga sumisigaw na mauubos hanggang makakaya. Tama na! Sobra na! Palitan na! 1951 itinatag ang isang organisasyon. Ang kanyang islogan, magsindi ng kandila sa halip na murahin ang kadiliman. Ang kanyang pangalan, National Movement for Free Elections o NAMPRIL. When I was a small boy and uh, magsaysay was running for president, there was the danger that if the elections would be fraudulent, the uh, communists at the time led by the Bomba Kotlaya ng Bayan would take power because of the people's disenchantment with democracy. So the church tried its best to ensure that the elections would be credible. The church mobilized uh, uh, citizens, including uh, the Namfrel, it was the first Namfrel founded in 1951 and eventually 1953 to ensure clean elections. I, I have to suffer with my people, I have to, to lead them uh, because of the responsibility they give to the people. 1983, pinatay si Ninoy Aquino. Maraming mamamayan na naparalisa sa takot noong panahon ng Marcelo. Ang biglang nagising at bumangon.
1984, may nakatakdang eleksyon para sa batasang pambansa. Muling nabuhay ang NAMPREL. We were faced with a new election for a batasan member and we took the position, shall we remain mere spectators or shall we become active participants in the electoral process? Kung hindi na yon, kailan pa? That was our battle cry. Nagbunga ang pagbabantay ng Nampril. Nabawasan ang pantaraya. Maraming oposisyonista ang nanalo. Mahigit 30% ng pwesto sa batasang pambansa. I am ready to call a snap election perhaps earlier than 8 months, perhaps in 3 months or... 1986, tumawag si Marcos ng snap election. Napikon yata sa mga banat na hindi lehitimo ang kanyang diktadora. Tumakbo laban kay Marcos ang balo ni Ninoy, si Cory Aquino. Dagsa ang tao sa mga rally ni Cory. Alam ko na minamahal ninyo ako. pagdating ng bilangan. Hukos-pukos. Sa bilang ng Nampril, nangunguna si Cory. Sa opisyal na kwenta ng Comelec at ng Batasan Pambansa, kabaliktaran ang resulta. They were accusing us that our results did not truly really reflect the will of the people. Then we asked the commission election, let's get an auditor. We have our election result. Let's put it here and let's get your election result and let's compare. And we will abide by the difference. But somehow, they did not accept the challenge. Somebody whacked him on the head. Maraming nagpakita ng kabayanihan sa pagtatanggol ng balota sa snap election. Umigit kumulang sa labing limang volunteer ng Nampril ang nagbuwis ng buhay. One of our volunteers uh, was killed in Mambusao, Capiz, Rodrigo Ponce. But Rodrigo Ponce was an ordinary farmer. And he says, if all of these professionals, these students, everybody was participating, Then I must also do my share. What happened is that they were counting the votes. Aquino, Marcos, Aquino, Marcos. Suddenly, three men went in with their guns and he immediately got the Philippine flag, wrapped the ballots, and embraced it. And he went to the door. And as he went there, he was shot four times. And I said, this man made a sacrifice for democracy. Isa pang volunteer, Paul Watcher, na nagbuwis ng buhay, si Ibelio Javier. Si Ibelio ay dating gobernador ng Antique. Ginugwardyahan niya ang mga balota nang paputukan siya ng apat na armadong lalaki. Tumakbo ang sugatang si Ibelio. Pumasok sa isang restaurant. Sinundan pa siya ng mga armado at doon, tinapos ang kanyang buhay. So there is some growth. I mean, again, when you take a look at what happened at EDSA, you know, in the 70s, that certainly couldn't happen. But uh, something, something happened. Dahil sa sobrang dahas at pandaraya, naggalit ang mga taong bayan. At ito'y naiuwi sa protesta na makasaysayan na kung tawagin ay EDSA. That, to me, was a very beautiful in, uh, period of our history. It was brought about by the convergence of so many forces. I think we were at that stage in history where, again, the bishops read the, read the situation correctly. The people were fed up with this whole, with the, 
Marcos regime and his effort to steal the votes, uh, steal, the, steal the elections, it was something that was something we had to oppose. In the uh, 1986 election, what was at stake was democracy. I, Corazon Pohuanco Aquino, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously Nakita ang lakas at kapangyarihan ng nagkakaisang bayan. What happened at EDSA? Can that happen again? I feel it can. Ngayon ay nahaharap na naman tayo sa isang pambansang eleksyon. Tulad sa maraming nakaraang eleksyon, marami tayong nakikitang nakakainis at nakakagalit. Never have the political parties dished out such low quality kind of candidates that in the past two elections, we, the citizenry end up saying none of the above. Before we could choose from the best and the better, now the worst and the unthinkable <laughs> and, the, and the puede na and the lesser evil. May dahilan para magalit, pero walang dahilan para mawalan ng pag-asa. I feel that something is changing. Uh, you know, just the fact that we talk about trapos, for instance, you know, we laugh at, uh, at uh, in other words, we, there's less acceptance, I think, of the way traditional politicians have been acting. Even in 1992 elections, there is a message there that's being given to politicians, and the one who had uh, the most money uh, placed third, and the one uh, who had the best so-called political machinery placed fourth. But when there is a really ground swell uh, of people for a certain cause or for something that they believe in, uh, it's capable of upending uh, some of the traditional uh, factors that make for elections. Nandi dito ang pag-asa ng bayan. Kaming mga bagets, <laughs> ang mga kabatang Pilipino. I personally believe that every election promises a beginning, and in every beginning lies the opportunity for change. And the youth in all its zealousness and it, in all its positive energy would always want to make progressive changes in society. I think the, the role of the youth has been recognized in this year's elections. Because you would see that there are, the political parties right now are forming youth for certain candidates. They're, they're forming the youth arm, and it just shows that the youth right now is having more key active role, a key role in this year's elections. And you would see that uh, the youth are trying to raise some questions. Malaking puwersa ang kabataan. Isang malaking sektor ng mga butante. Sa darating na eleksyon, Malaki ang magagawa ng malakas na puwersang ito. The youth, and that is the voters from the ages of 18 to 30, constitute more than 50% of all the registered voters in this country. That's real power for you. The youth can come together to make sure that our elections are free, orderly, peaceful, and credible. Silang nakakapagbasa ng dyaryo at nakakapanood ng television. Higit sa lahat, nakakaintindi ng Ingles. No? Sa aking paningin, ang pinakamahalagang papel na maaaring gampanan ng kabataan at mga estudyante ay ang magamit nila ang kanilang karunungan upang Maturuan ang nakararami sa ating lipunan. Mabuhay ang kabataan. Aba, pati ako'y dumaan na rin dyan. Pero huwag natin kakalimutan, mga kababayan. Lahat tayo ay may katungkulan sa darating na halalan. Every little thing we do to help make the elections cleaner, whether they succeed or not, is a step forward. You know, the constant effort, the constant effort to change. So that, again, realistically, I'm not going to expect many great changes, but when it happens, I'll be very happy. For every little advance, I'll be happy.
there is such a thing as uh, doing something by yourself, trying to transform it from within, even if the chances of success are low, even if uh, you know that uh, you cannot do it in one, you know, in one mighty effort and you'd have to keep on doing it again and again, uh, I don't think they should give up. If we are to preserve democracy, but more than that, if we want to have political stability and economic growth, you have to carry out your civic duty. You have to be involved. You, no matter how small you are, you can make a difference. Dito po sa ating Bayang Pilipinas, eleksyon na naman, bagong palabas. Pero hindi ito ehersisyong walang saysay. Sa pamamagitan ng halalan, Iginigiit natin ang kalayaan sa pamamagitan ng balota. Ipinahahayag natin ang demokrasya. Ang bayan kong Pilipinas, lupain ang hintot bulaklak, pag-ibig ang sa kanyang palad, nagalay na. So